Alchemist Colon Brotherhood episodes 15 and 16. Sorry, I know you guys look forward to the picture, but I just wanted to watch the episode. <laughs> now, am I watching the wrong show or did they change the opening sequence? There's like ninjas in it. <laughs> After only 14 episodes, they've changed the opening sequence. Okay, I'm totally watching the wrong show right now. <laughs> because Winry is here and she's not supposed to be here because she's in the other town. This is lying to me. It's saying it's Full Metal Alchemist Colon Brotherhood episode 15, but it's a lie. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so now the opening scene is Scar versus the Silver Alchemist. I don't understand what's going on. Kablooey, so much for that guy. Ew. I really think I'm watching the wrong show right now because there is Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Colon Brotherhood. There's different opening theme songs, and this is a new website because the previous one took forever to load. So it says, episode 15, Messenger from the Past. Or East. <laughs> I didn't see it. So there's this little girl who was rescued by Mr. Yoki, the guy from the previous episode who brought a bunch of evil guys to Scar. So this little girl is Chinese, judging by the fact that she has this <laughs> panda stuffed animal on her arm. Alright, and she can do some healing alchemy. Eastern alchemy. Okay, so that stuffed animal is not a stuffed animal, it's actually a animal. So she looks at Scar's arm and she's like, oh, that's Eastern alchemy, isn't it? And Scar's like, well, my brother studied Eastern alchemy and Western alchemy, and this taboo is a result of that. So this little girl is trying to find immortality. She couldn't find it with Eastern alchemy, so she's looking for Western alchemy. And she knows about Ed, and she wants to find him. She has kind of this, like, inflated view of this man, who we know is Ed. Meanwhile, I believe it's Risa walking around at night, and Barry the Chopper attacks, <laughs> and she takes him out. Remember Barry the Chopper? From episode, like, eight? <laughs> Roy comes by, so he can hear what Barry the Chopper has to say. So all the scientists who work on, worked on the stone were used as ingredients for the stone. Roy's like, are you the one who killed Hughes? Barry the Chopper says no, because we know it was actually Envy. So Ed and Al visit Winry because Ed needs some repairs on his arm. So she's made some brief temporary repairs to Ed's arm. And so he's trying to kill some time, but of course all this in that town is auto mail shop. So he's like, this is so boring. So they find a guy, and judging by his handkerchief, which has a panda ta uh, panda image on it, I assume he's probably related to that little girl who's with Scar. So he's there to do some Eastern alchemy research. So with Western alchemy, they use it primarily for healing, but in Eastern alchemy, it's used primarily for war. I think I got those two mixed up. As Willy Wonka would say, strike that, reverse it. So Al and Ed are like, this is so cool, you know, healing, that's really interesting. I, we want to learn about it. So this kid is not an alchemist. He's only there for research because it's interesting. And he's looking for info on the Philosopher's Stone. And he's like, it seems to me that you know a little bit about the Philosopher's Stone. Why don't you share it? So the little girl's name is Mei Chang, and his name is Ling something or other. The kid has like a bunch of ninja acrobats who like come out and attack Ed and Al. So Ed and Al fight the ninjas. When I say ninjas, they're like seriously ninjas. I can't really tell who's winning. So Ed figures out that the, the ninja servants are sort of worked up when he insults the, his master. And he takes off her mask and realizes it's a woman! Holy crap! So it turns out Al can use alchemy without a transmutation circle, and he does it for the first time in order to restrain the ninja that was attacking him. So Ed's arm has been broken off, and he has captured the female ninja who has been attacking him. So the guy and the two ninjas escape. So Ed figures out that Al now officially knows more than him. He's sort of devastated. So the guy reveals that he's a prince, because they found him again. And Ed and Al just kind of laugh at him because they're like, what? I mean, like, you made us pay for your stuff and you can't possibly be a prince. And the guy's like, well, you know, there's so many princes that it doesn't really mean anything, really. There's like 43 princes and princesses. And he's the 12th. 
So the guy is trying to find immortality so that he can give it to his dying father in order to gain the country so that he can become the king. And since there are, <laughs> there are like 45 princes and princesses trying to gain his favor, he thinks that immortality will be the best option. And then Winry walk walks in and she sees the damage Edda's done to his arm. Oh, so Ed and Al are going back to Central. And Winry's like, I wanna go too because I wanna go thank Mr. Hughes. <laughs> he was dead though. And Kid, who's been following around, who's a prince, I totally forget his name, but he wants to come too. Meanwhile, with Scar, Scar's like, I have no name. I'm so angry with life. And I'm on a path of no return. Okay, everything suddenly feels really different. I wonder if I've accidentally switched over to regular Full Metal Alchemist because I'm at a new site, as I stated before. Regardless of this fact, let's move on to episode 16. Full Metal Alchemist, Colin Brotherhood, episode 16. So it turns out they did go back to Central, the two ninjas and the young master. So the young master has kind of disappeared. Episode 16, a comrade in... I'm so embarrassed, I totally missed it. So the military guys are taking care of Barry the Chopper. I don't know any of their names, I feel like I'm supposed to know who these guys are. I mean, I recognize their appearances, but I don't know their names. Uh, one kid has a cigarette, and one kid has, like, gray hair. So basically, all of the soldiers are struggling with their new situation in Central City. So the prince gets arrested. So when we decides to go off and meet up with Hughes' family, <laughs> while Ed and Al decide to go to the military. <laughs> it's so sad because they don't know Hughes is dead. He died in episode 10. It was six episodes ago. They run by the phone booth that Hughes was murdered in. Oh, so sad. So meanwhile, Sheska is hiding a napping, unshaven Roy in Research Room 3. He's spending all of his time researching Hughes' death, and he's not really sleeping. So Roy's looking up documents on Research Laboratory Number 5. That was the one that was burnt down. So that, that guy who came and talked to Sheska was actually Envy making himself look like someone else? Oh no! It's, it's difficult because Envy can make himself look like anyone. Roy has not been sleeping well. <laughs> it's Armstrong. <laughs> so Roy's like, what's up with the bandages? Armstrong's like, well, you know, there was an incident down south. And I met up with the Elk brothers, and Roy's like, did you tell him about Hugh's death? And Armstrong's like, no! So the reason why Armstrong refused to tell the Elric brothers is because Hughes was investigating the whole Philosopher's Stone business, and he's worried that if they found out that he died because of what they were looking into, then they would feel really bad. So Armstrong's like, please be careful, Roy, because you never know who's listening. So Ed shows up and he sees Lieutenant Hawkeye, and then of course Roy rolls in. Apparently it's been a month since Hughes was killed. And so Ed's like, oh, I came to see Hughes and tell him, hey. And Roy's like, you know what, he retired. He went to the country with his wife and his daughter. Ed's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so sad. Roy's like, be careful. So Ed's like, we ought to tell Winry because she's heading to his house, so, you know, obviously he doesn't live there anymore because he's moved to the country. So, Second Lieutenant Ross comes along and she's like, hey, you know that Hughes got promoted to ranks? And then Ed and Ellie totally figure it out. Because the only reason he would be promoted so quickly is because he died. And Lieutenant Ross is like, crap, oops. <laughs> and Ed's like, it's my fault, I dragged him into this. All these Hughes flashbacks are making me so depressed. <laughs> Why did Hughes have to die? Meanwhile, Winry has gone to Hughes' house and his daughter opens the door like, Dad! Oh, it's Winry. Ed's like, go home, Al. I have to do this myself. And Al's like, come on, seriously? Like, come on, this is both of our problems. So Ed's like, I gotta tell you guys something. The reason Hughes died is because 
I uncovered something about the Philosopher's Stone and killing Hughes was their way of saying don't meddle in our affairs. But wife is like, no, you know, if he had to die prematurely, he wanted to die like this. If you give up right now, then my husband's death is meaningless. So you better find another way. So Ed, Al, and Winry walk away and they're depressed. Of course, I'm depressed. This is sad. So Ed's like, Winry, let's go get something to eat. And Winry's like, well, actually, I've gotten really good at making apple pie. And she wanted to give some of her apple pie to Hughes, but Hughes is totally dead. Oh, this is so sad. Meanwhile, all the Sin people are hanging out like, yeah, we totally meant for, for Roy to go to Central. That was our intention. Envy has thought of this great way to keep Roy busy. So Maria Ross was the chick that Envy transformed into in order to kill Hughes. And she's now being brought up on charges because apparently people saw her doing that. Please don't tell me Cigarette Guy is on a date with Lust. Oh no, Cigarette Guy is on a date with Lust. Ah! Ah, come on, man, isn't it obvious that she's evil? What's coming up next? Um, I need to know more about Roy. Frankly, I mean, I think he's a really interesting guy and a really interesting character, but up until this point, we don't know much about him. I don't know how he creates his alchemy. I know he's the flame alchemist, but I don't know how or why he does it. And I know he's BFFs with Hughes, who is dead, but I don't know why that is. How does he create his alchemy without a transmutation circle? Anyway, I hope that it is explained soon. And if it's never explained, someone please explain it to me. <laughs> Suddenly, Roy is playing a big part in this show. In the first few episodes of the show, I didn't really see him as an important character. I sort of just saw him as this fan service background character who was very attractive and very cool and very interesting, but you know, we never would see much of him. But suddenly, ever since Hugh's death, he's become very important and quite integral to the plot, actually. So I'm interested to see how his role in this show evolves. Anyway, I'll see you next time.